on behalf of the management officers and men of the NDLEA, I would like to first of all thank His Excellency the Senate President for granting us this opportunity at a very short notice. Actually, I was surprised when we got information that our request had been granted for, for today itself. Your Excellency, we are proud to say, is one of the key stakeholders in Nigeria that is very seized of this matter of drug use, drug abuse, and how we can exterminate this scourge. And under his leadership, the Senate committee also has displayed great interest, competence, support, and efforts on this matter. In fact, the process is already on from the Committee for the Review of, of the Act of the NDLEA. This is a very important step to correct some of the lapses in an act that was promulgated way back in 1989. The purpose of today's visit, Your Excellency, is twofold, basically. It is an advocacy visit, and secondly, a visit that calls for urgent intervention from the Senate President. Nigeria is in a state of siege today. Yes, you have the insurgency and the banditry and kidnapping. But if you went to Ogoni land and spoke to somebody about insurgency, he may not be very concerned. If you go to some other parts of the country and speak of kidnapping in some areas, it's not a major concern. If you go to some other areas and speak of banditry, it may not be of major concern. But when you enter the realm of drugs, drug abuse, every part of Nigeria, you can for sure say that everybody in this room knows somebody or a neighbor or a family that has affliction with drug abuse. The drug abuse code is actually the number one problem we are facing. It's everywhere. First of all, it destroys our kids, women, our youths, the family system. And secondly, it is behind the criminalities, which is everywhere now. Every day on the news and the newspapers, you read of one criminality or the other. You have to be crazy or have crazy to commit some of these criminalities. And what fuels it is drug use. Even the insurgency itself, they take drugs. The bandits, they take drugs before they go into the activities. And throughout military history, we know that drugs have been used actually as a tool. At the outbreak of World War II, the three-week campaign by Hitler over Poland, how did they achieve it in three weeks to bring an entire country? They gave them drugs, actually. It was issued formally, and the troops broke into Poland for three days, no sleeping, because they were already dropped 
And this is the same thing that is happening in the country. These criminalities will not end so quickly until we face the underlying nexus between it and drugs. Unfortunately, to this point, the drug situation is not properly factored into the security architecture. We look at the other segments, but forget that this is the causative area that needs to be equally attended to. Your Excellency, there are two aspects of the drug war. The drug reduction in supply and the drug reduction in demand. The supply reduction facet is the area where the NDLEA faces, interrupts, and destroys the cultivation, manufacture, processing, marketing, selling, importing, exporting, and use of drugs. And the demand reduction side, which must be viewed equally and which is perhaps more challenging than the other one, is where we have to face the prevention of drug use from the multitudes that are not yet taking drugs and to treat those who already are addicted. All these are competing areas, they are multisectoral, we need to involve families, communities, the school system, <clears throat> the National Assembly, the executive, the media, religious leaders, traditional institutions, and so on. When I took over about six or seven weeks back, I found the agency Comatos. Comatos and I would not like to go into too much detail <laughs> because of the press. And this is an agency that we need to uh, demonstrate uh, readiness. But unfortunately, the state of readiness is very, very weak. The morale, above all, is the weakest that I've ever met in any parliamentary institution. Almost every single staff is owed either a DTA allowance or his allowance for prosecution, the movement to and fro, court processes or transfer, traveling. There's over four billion naira owed just for the staff and death benefits. So more is so low, there's stagnation, the promotions, postings, because there's no money. That is one aspect. The other aspect is the amount in the agency that goes out to the state command that are about 50. I mentioned in private to <laughs> His Excellency, and I will not say it here, because you may all run, look for where to run to, because of surprise. It's such a, a pittance, very sad. And the key thing to, to get out uh, on this call is that when the NDLEA officials are given a pittance, there is a temptation to compromise with the people they're supposed to be going after. That is why we always request um, for sufficiency. Now, the inadequacies in other areas, I'm very reluctant to, to go into it, as that will give uh, a picture that I don't want to give outside. But I should mention one, at least, which is the absence of barracks. It is amazing 
that we are the only security agency fighting with barons and live among them also in the same, uh, uh, you know, communities. And no wonder that they always come in the middle of the night and assassinate our people. We need barracks, we need operational items for work, scanning machines, forensics, polygraph machines, because we must test, we must use lie detectors on our officials to, to be sure that they are straight uh, and honest. The dilapidated buildings, office equipment lacking, it's, it's, it's even the courses, even the courses. The last course that was properly run was in 2003. You wouldn't believe it, Your Excellency. 2003, a proper course by the institution. So for this reason, in summary, there are three things First is we need urgent intervention to support us. The agency is in dire need of funding and that is completely not provided for to fight this war. And second is the issue of the barrack. And third, is the issue of the provision in the budget for us to, 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 to buy a headquarters. We don't need it today, believe me. There are so many other critical things ahead of us. And in any case, one of the uh, seized buildings that is being, uh, that was seized, I think from EFCC, we have in uh, coordination with our supervisory ministry, the Ministry of Justice. We have indicated interest in one. They have approved and sent for it to be allocated to us. So we will need to shift that money for buying a building, which is not our priority at all now, to things like arms and, and other challenging things. These people we are fighting in Edo State about four weeks ago, we, we had the, the biggest raid ever in the history of NDLA. 230 tons of cannabis. There was no way they were challenged by the villagers who were even better armed. I had to instruct them to burn the whole thing. In summary, Your Excellency, we are very appreciative. We thank you for this opportunity. And we are hopeful that we'll get soccer from, from the National Assembly and from the Senate. Thank you, sir.